there fellow zombie slayers, my name is Stanley557, and today let's start talking about cut content. Now, cut content is a very interesting subject in the zombies community. For a while, cut content is, well, more associated with rumors rather than the actual cut content from the game. The main point that comes to mind is Zombie Chronicles and Zombie Chronicles 2. For the longest time, many players were definitely believing and told that DLC 5 was a real thing. And most of the time it really wasn't. Same thing with Zombie Chronicles 2. How many games have we heard about Zombie Chronicles 2? You know what? It's not even the point of the video. Anyways. This is a quick overview of all the cut content in the Call of Duty Zombies series. I want to put all this in one coherent YouTube space so that if anyone ever needs to hear anything about cut content in zombies, and keep in mind, I'm only going to be talking about the content that can still be found in various builds of the game and hidden in the source files and code. So at the moment, no Zombie Chronicles 2, as nothing in the code has ever made reference to it other than by leakers on Twitter. And without further ado, Let's just jump right into it. World at War is probably the lightest in terms of cut content that wasn't used, with most of the content having found its way into future titles, like how Kian Ritter Toten was originally supposed to show up as a DLC 4 map, but was pushed to a launch map in Black Ops 1. So let's start out with a cut perk machine, Ammomatic. Originally, the first new perk machine added to the game, Ammomatic would have made an appearance in Shinonuma and Doris. When purchased, it would grant players a max ammo. Pretty simple. For some reason, I remember reading back in the day that the perk would cost 10,000 points, but I couldn't find anything to back up this claim. Ammomatic would most likely function as an ammo machine rather than as a perk that takes up a perk slot, but who knows, maybe the risk versus reward factor of the perk was permanently losing a perk slot until you downed. The machine was most likely removed as it would have broken the balance of the game, if it didn't function as one of the player's primary perks. We would eventually see the machine actually added back into the series through the addition of ammo boxes littered all throughout Cold War Zombies. Fun fact, there was even quotes associated with the perk too. Here, have a listen. Max Ammo Machine. Ah, genius. Ammo Machine! What a wonderful idea! Ah, this is a blessing from the Emperor! An ammo machine! What a brilliant idea! As discussed earlier, Keener to Toten was originally supposed to release in World at War as a part of DLC 4. DLC 4 originally featured three zombies maps, Kino, the original concept for Moon which took place in Paris, and a third map titled Coast, which supposedly became Call of the Dead. All these maps were teased on the Duris poster board. The reason these maps were cancelled and moved was to reallocate resources to finish BO1 in time. <laughs> Never heard of that before. <coughs> Sorry, I got a bit of a cough going on. According to the Cutting Room Floor, a website dedicated to cut content, there was also an unused game mode only ever mentioned in text strings titled Payload. Payload would see players escorting, well, a payload. And according to the scripts, players would succeed if they escorted the payload and successfully killed enough of the undead. If successful, players would become the master of unlocking. Whatever that means. The game mode was obviously cut before it was even started, and it shocks me something like this hasn't been brought back in some way, shape, or form. The closest we've ever gotten to seeing what this mode might have looked like is the Valkyrie Escort in Gorod, or the Agarthan Device boss fight in Tog. On a side note, Hellhounds were originally supposed to be added to Verruckt, but were then cut for unknown reasons. Apparently, Shino Numa has a lot more unused content besides the Ammomatic Machine. Each of the four perks in the files have ruined swamp-themed textures that were supposed to replace the original ones. This was most likely removed to give them all a consistent theme and look with the other maps, and probably because the perk machines spawn into the map as players open doors. This coincides with another piece of cut content. Each of the four characters has quotes when opening specific doors around the map. Each quote refers to the characters wondering which perk will be behind each area of the map. Oh no, that's freaking fair, ain't it? I wonder which one it will be this time. What's it going to be this time? It will become the machine it is supposed to become. Now, each perk machine was going to be randomized around the map, but unlike in the final product where the perks randomize in front of the player's gaze, the perks would have already spawned in, and it's up to the players to hunt them down and locate where each one spawned. This would justify the existence of the swamp-themed textures, as the storytelling would have implied the facility had been abandoned for years. 
These ideas were probably cut to make the map feel more magical, and were most likely a stylistic choice by the developers. Alongside the flogger and electric trap, unused quotes also indicate the use of a guillotine, a barrel, a battery, and a chopper. The guillotine and chopper were most likely the same machine changed throughout development, and would have most likely chopped off zombies' heads. This idea would come back later and buried as the aptly named head chopper. And the barrel and battery quotes don't leave a lot to be desired, so at most we can speculate that the barrel trap would have most likely functioned like a rendition of the fire pit trap found in Kino, or the flame trap found in Ascension, and the battery trap was most likely an electric floor trap that electrocuted zombies that walked over it. The example I can see of this coming back is weirdly in IW's Zombies in Spaceland, with the battery. Battery could have also been another name for the electric traps seen throughout the series. Another reference to this trap can be found in transit with the existence of an actual electric trap, a trap most people, myself included, forgot even existed. Regardless, most of these traps were probably cut to save time and were redundant with the flogger and the multiple electric traps already on the map. Also found in the code is this decal for an any gun chalk. This concept is quite similar to the one later used in Buried, where players draw on wall buys using various pieces of chalk. Now, onto Doris. Apparently, only in this map exists the remnants of early in-development map dialogue. These pieces of dialogue are not recorded by the established voice actors, and are typically used as placeholders, or as a way for the writer to give direction and indicate how he wants to line the sound. These clearly aren't any of our main cast. Here, have a listen. Damn, that only counts as half a kill. Gotta link up this terraformer, er, uh, teleporter. Oh, good, it is still here. I mean, oh, what could this be? Richthofen, go figure that machine out. I have to take a shit. I'm not sure I can make it to the mainframe in time. Ah uh, yes, Tony, my favorite Japanese samurai. There's also a cut room in the map as well. Where this gobblegum machine is in the giant, exists a fully modeled room just outside of the player's view. It's unclear why this room was cut and doesn't exist in any version or re-release currently of the map. In the code, there's also text strings and scripts that reference a player-controlled zombie. Now, unlike Brain Rot seen later on in the series, the player would actually be able to control a zombie. This feature would have given the player the brain's weapon, reduced their movement to 30%, and if down, fellow zombies would supposedly revive the player. It's unclear what happened to this mode, why it was cut, and how it would have played, but remnants of it obviously became the turn mode found in Black Ops 2. There's also a reference to what's called a crawler round. Now, this either has two implications. Either it's an entire round full of crawler zombies, zombies that have had their legs blown off, or the more likely option is that it's a crawler round referencing the Nova crawlers. And considering Kino is being developed for World at War, it's quite likely the crawler rounds refer to our good friends, the Nova crawlers, which presumably would have been given their own round in World at War Kino. Now, the crawler round would actually see a return in Black Ops 4's Voyager Despair's Gauntlet on round 12, and the Nova crawler only round would make a return in Classified's Gauntlet on round 20. This round was most likely cut with the scrap development of Kino. There's also script files referencing the existence of an auto turret. Fully fleshed out in Black Ops 1, the World at War auto turret most likely would have functioned the same. Costing 1500 points, the weapon would attack the undead for 30 seconds before needing to be cooled down. And like its appearance in Black Ops 1, it would have sucked. And finally, there's cut weapons. Starting off with the classic default weapon. Default weapon is a hidden weapon seen in a lot of CODs. This weapon is usually used for testing purposes and has the player making finger guns with their hands. The next weapon is referred to as Brains, which is apparently the name of the attack that the zombies use against the players. This weapon would have also been used with the player-controlled zombie. The weapon comes with its own first-person animations and melee ability. Fun fact, this animation can actually be seen in the Varuk trailer. And finally, there's the various unused pack-a-punch guns. The weapons include the Arasaka, the Mosin Nugget, the Springfield, and the Double Barrel Shotgun with each of these weapons seeing various different stages of the development, with the double barrel actually being fully complete and just needs to be added in through mods. This probably works because the double barrel actually exists on Doris with a different Pack-a-Punch variant. Why it was changed, we don't really know. But thank god we never got the Springfield Pack-a-Punched. I should mention, in the code exists an additional theme for the ending of a dog round never heard in-game. Here, have a listen.
Wow, apparently there is more to look at. So there are some even more cut maps than the original three that we talked about. And I'm putting this at the end of the World at War section rather than with the rest of the cut maps because I would have to re-edit the entire Vegas file and I really don't feel like doing that. Semper Fi Zombies is another map that was supposed to be included at the launch of the game. Apparently, it can be found by creating a memory dump of the Xbox Magazine demo of the game. This map was set on the beaches of Macon. This is listed alongside Noct, Verruckt, and another map called Farm for inclusion in the base game or as a first DLC pack. Another map was, of course, the Nazi Zombies Farm. Apparently, Farm can be found by using mod tools, and reference of it can be found through memory dumps. It is probably intended to be included either in the base game or in the first map pack, but it very clearly ended up becoming the titular farm in Black Ops 2. And finally, there's Farmhouse. Apparently, it is possibly an early version of the farm map we just mentioned, but could be entirely a different map entirely. We don't know what happened to it, but Farmhouse would become a map in, of all things, World War II Zombies. Wow, World of War had a lot more content than I was initially expecting. I'm pretty sure it's the game with the most cut content, in fact. Then again, the game was cut short to make room for Black Ops 1's development, a pattern we would see again in the future. Speaking of Black Ops 1... Let's just jump right into the perks, starting off with the three different variations of PhD, because one just wasn't enough apparently. There's Boom Juice, DPD Boom, and Pronade. Boom Juice allowed the player to make explosives, DPD Boom was a renamed version of Boom Juice, and Pronade affected the way the player proned. It appears to be that each of these three perks tells the evolving story of PhD's creation, with the name getting a little snappier with each iteration, and the effects evolving. Going from just creating explosions, to explosions that can be created by going prone, to explosions that can be created by flopping. Boom Juice was clearly a placeholder name, DPD Boom was most likely an evolution of Boom Juice, and Pronade sounds like the name of an actual perk, before finally being scrapped in favor of the much snappier PhD Flopper. Next up is Tough Brew, an undescribed perk that most likely would have increased the player's defensive abilities in some way, as many of the quotes make reference to the fact that it increases the player's defense. Perhaps it was an early version of Stone Cold Stronghold. The perk was also supposed to appear alongside PhD's introduction on Ascension. Tough Brew! That's what I'm talking about! Oh yeah, maybe this will toughen me up! This drink goes down like glue! A drink for a true warrior! And finally, there's Candelier. Now, unlike Ammomatic, Candelier would have given the player increased ammo reserves. This idea would finally come back in Black Ops 4 as one of my personal favorite perks, Bandolier Bandit. What happened to the perk is unclear. Next up is Unused Maps. In DLC 3, Escalation, exists remnants of a map titled Temple of Doom. This was most likely a placeholder name for Shangri-La. And finally, there's references to the classic Paris map, which was later reinvented as the controversial Moon. While exploring the map, players have also found a fourth lander location in Ascension, and it's theorized this is where Double Tap would have been. It's most likely that this area was cut to save time in development. And in Shangri-La, underneath the map exist teleporter boxes. Possibly the map would have connected to Classified or Groom Lake, but that connection clearly hadn't been established until Black Ops 4, so who knows where these teleporters were intended to take us. And, in the code, exist references to a blowpipe wonder weapon. In 5, exist reference and audio quotes to dog rounds. It's unclear why this was cut, but Hellhounds would eventually make a reappearance in Classified. Good! I hate dogs! Boom goes the doggy! Die like the dog you are! The president didn't appreciate your canine dander. In Black Ops 1, there's also a ton of unused Samantha voice lines. These have been preserved by Rizzle. Rizzle? I, I'm saying, I think I'm saying that right. What's interesting is that there's a bonus points voice line, a power-up which wouldn't show up until Black Ops 4. Bonus points! Surprise! 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 Enjoy your presents! I'll take no Attention, zombie shoppers! Time for a fire sale! Until the music stops, box bowls $10 at a convenient location near you. <laughs> and finally, there's cut weapons. Now, this one's a doozy. The Sabertooth was supposed to make an appearance in Zombies. 
apparently the chainsaw-like weapon had almost full functionality. The weapon has no place in the game mode, and it's quite clear why it was cut. Mostly for balance reasons, probably. And granted, seeing how overpowered the Crystal Axe was in Forsaken, this thing would have either been complete dog water or it would have destroyed Black Ops 1's balance. The same can also be said about the M2 flamethrower, which shows up in Dead Ops Arcade. Code suggests that it would have appeared in Kino in 5. Next up is the AK-47. Apparently the weapon's base version isn't fully completed. Its pack punch variant, the Red Mist, is complete, with a working flamethrower attachment too. The Grim Reaper also would have made an appearance, but was most likely removed because the box already featured the M72 Law and the China Lake. Then there's the MP40, which was supposed to be added to 5, but besides that it doesn't exist in Zombies. And then there's the Uzi and KS-23, which are both referenced, but aside from that, no work have been done to include them any further. In the code can also be found Pack-a-Punch variants for the Caparis? Caparis? Whatever this stupid thing, the Wa 2000, the Stoner 63, and the Scorpion. Which, up until writing this script, I literally didn't know that the Stoner or Scorpion were in Black Ops 1. Can you tell I don't play multiplayer? And finally, there's the Mac 11, the Enfield, and the M60, which are all completed with working pack punch variants. It's unclear why none of these three weapons were added besides maybe balancing the box better. Now, let's talk about weapons that were cut for Black Ops 1 entirely. Of course, there's World at War's Brains weapon. Apparently, there's a different version of the Mustang and Sally in CZ-75 Dual Wield referenced in the code. Apparently, if you just drop both these weapons, they just crash the game. Because of course, why wouldn't they? And then there's everyone's favorite finger guns, the default weapon. And apparently an unused model for the early version of the Winter's Howl. And if you ask me, this thing just looks like a death ray. In 5, there also exists coding and in-game quotes, which indicate the Thunder Gun would have made another appearance, but was scrapped in favor of the new Winter's Howl, which everyone totally loves and doesn't think sucks! Clear the deck! I wonder if this is covered by the Second Amendment. Ah, as big as my ego and just as powerful. Torn asunder! In Call of the Dead, the Wonder Waff can be pack-a-punched through the use of a mod menu, but lacks a pack-a-punch camo, implying that the weapon was most likely ported from World at War to Call of the Dead. And finally, in Shangri-La, there exists concept art which reveals the existence of elemental 3179 JGB 215s. While we only ever use the green stone, it's unclear what the other effects the weapon would have had. Okay, this is an, a this is an addendum. While writing the Black Ops 3 section of this video, I came across more concept art that revealed to us some more details about the original idea for the Temple map. And this concept art for the Elemental 3179 JGB215 comes with a ton of additional concept art that shows how the weapon was slowly created, and the different forms it was going to take. So here, take a look at some of these. Alongside this, I also found the concept art that showed off an early layout for the temple level, and ideas going around for the first unique pack a punch inspired by the mythology of the area. It's super cool, and it's all just tucked away on this random Tumblr page. And through even more deep diving, I even found more references to the temple map back when it was a Vietnam inspired map. These pieces of art indicate early signs of the development before the map was completely changed from Vietnam to Shangri-La. I'll show some of the concept arts on screen right now. And fun fact, the concept art for the Smoke Scream Zombie makes reference to a flamethrower being effective against these types of enemies, which would have sounded cool, and could have also indicated where the M2 flamethrower was going to show up. The art also indicates that many of the zombies were created by the effects of Agent Orange rather than the usual Element 115. Enemies include the Smoke Screen Zombie, an early version of Shaolin's Ninja Zombie with the Martial Arts Zombie, what's called the Meteor Infected Zombie, so it appears a 115 meteor would have come into play, and an oxen zombie. The oxen idea was actually used in Dead Ops Arcade 2 of all places. And that's all the cut content I could find for Black Ops 1. A bit shorter than I thought, but let's move on to Black Ops 2. Ah, Black Ops 2. As far as I know, there are no cut perks found in the code. Honestly though, I'm not complaining. So let's move on and talk about everyone's favorite piece of garbage, Transit. 
Sadly, some of the pictures associated with the cut content have been lost to time. So forgive me, because as far as I'm aware, all these ideas did exist at one point in development or have been mentioned in code. And trust me, the internet wave actors machine did not help me. So forgive me, because as far as I'm aware, all the ideas I'm about to present did exist at one point in development or have been mentioned in code. The first and most useful item found in the code belongs to the upgradable jet gun. The upgrade would have made the weapon more like the paralyzer, with a reduced cooldown timer, the ability to propel zombies, and an increased ability to consume the undead horde. Why it was never used, we may never know. Another cut feature of the jet gun was its flavor text. When a player prepares to pick up the jet gun, the interact text says, "Oh yeah. This feature apparently still exists in the Wii U version, a fact that was brought to my attention by my friend Parker, who played the Wii U version a lot when he was a kid. So we all know he's criminally insane. Some other features still apparent in the Wii U version are double reserve ammo that exists for the Mustang and Sally's and the dual wield 5.7s. Another feature cut were the ambush rounds. While players are traveling along the bus throughout the map, players would have a chance to get ambushed by hellhounds. The bus would break down and players would have to fight them all off to resume moving. After defeating all the hellhounds, players would be rewarded with a max ammo. To further add to the proof of these rounds existing is the toggleable hellhound round setting found in Grief. Richtofen also has a ton of cut quotes, each one having him comment on various areas of the map to players as they explore. These were most likely cut to keep with the consistency that only the player playing a Stuhlinger can hear him. This idea would resurface in Togder Toten, with the player playing a Stuhlinger hearing Richtofen's comments as they walk around the map and slaughter the undead. Boathouse, huh? Lost my virginity in a boathouse. It doesn't count if you were by yourself, Sammy. There's also a text file with references to a survival and grief mode for the power station. But honestly, I don't think we're missing out on that one. It was most likely cut due to development time. And finally, there's a crap ton of different game modes mentioned in the code. They are as follows. Race, this would be a special game mode that would see players, well, racing their opponent across the tunnel, power station, and farm areas of the map. What the goal was, we don't really know, although this screen cap of the mode's remnants still exist. Meat was most likely an early version of Grief, and would see players split into 4v4 teams on opposite sides of the map. Players would then grab a piece of meat and toss it to the other side in hopes of killing the other team. Whichever team survives the longest wins. It's most likely that this mode was cut because players hardly interact with the undead, only avoiding them and not really fighting them. And then there's the Grief mode, which it eventually evolved into. These quotes can still be found thanks to DK Dynamite, and even uses the placeholder Richtofen voice actor too. So it's unlikely either of these modes got very far into development. Hello, my sexy leg participants. It is your fearless leader, Rick Toffin. Welcome to race. It's very easy. Just kill the required amount of zombies to open a door, move through to the next area, and repeat until you cross the finish line. A glorious game, if I do say so myself. Be sure to cause your opponent some grief along the way. Get ready to race. Hey there, willing participants! Welcome to meat! The rules are easy. When the meat drops, you finally reach the manhood. I mean, grab it, throw it, don't get caught with it. Zombies will only attack you if your side has the meat. Don't die and you might just win. Feel free to kick it too, my pretties. Get ready to play meat! Grief has landed! Protect it from the zombies and send it back to your opponents. Okay, so here's what is going to happen. You as a player, you know who you are, pretty. You need to shoot targets to get the bridge to fall down. Oh, wait, you don't have any bullets. Try killing zombies by stabby stabby! Here's also some early pictures throughout development. The first picture is an early build loading screen for farms race mode. The second picture shows an early version of transit before it was destroyed. It's quite possible this is simply a placeholder before the updated destroyed map was created. Or maybe it was to give the developers an idea of what the map looked like before it was destroyed. The third picture shows us what looks like an early version of the meat mode that would seemingly take place in a distorted version of town outfitted for this mode. You can even see the dividing line that would separate teams. And finally, in the fourth photo, we see an early look at the more completed version of town, furnished with a beautiful skybox and a meteor shower. And back to the various game modes, these are the ones which only have titles. Containment, Deadpool, No Man's Land, Pitted, Richtofen, and Maxis. Besides No Man's Land, which most likely would have been a game mode designed around the No Man's Land concept introduced in Moon and Forsaken, 
it's unclear how any of these modes would have worked. And of course, there's the cut transit Easter egg songs, the original Avenged Sevenfold Carry On, and Skrillex's I'ma Try It Out. It's unclear why both of these songs were cut, despite the fact that the original Carry On shows up in Black Ops 2's campaign. Okay, that's enough about transit. I don't know how much more I could handle. Now, there's a ton of cut and unused quotes from the game, with none of them being of any real interest except for this one from Stoolinger in Die Rise. Apparently, it's a cut feature, but Stoolinger would have actually been able to understand the undead, most likely an effect from consuming the flesh. When speaking to them, Stoolinger says, Ugh, it's this book. It's cursed. It's unclear what book he's talking about, but considering that he would one day be written to be the collector of the Cronori in the Victus comics, I thought it was a pretty interesting find. Another piece of lost media is this music box track. And funny enough, I could have sworn I'd heard this track somewhere. Because it's the exact same track used in FNAF 3 of all places. It's clearly the same track slowed down, with a slight berry twist. Another unused track belongs to our good friend the Witches. This track, aptly named Ghost Round, indicates the buried witches were originally going to be a hellhound-like enemy with their own dedicated round. It's unclear why the mechanic was changed. There's also Richtofen's head, also preserved by DK Dynamite. Modders were able to fully restore its functionality, animations, and voice work. The head would have been found on Mob of the Dead's version of Grief, and is a severed head of the one and only Dr. Edward Richtofen. The item would have functioned a lot like the meat found in Transit's version of Grief. What he's doing here, I have no idea. But it's probably for the better that this idea went into the scrap bin. <laughs> hey, I'm over here. <laughs> To come and pick me up. <laughs> Let's play toss the head. <sighs> Stop leaving me on the ground. <sighs> God, it's really dirty on the ground. Come and get me. <sighs> and now, let's get back to some concept art. In Barry's intro cutscene, we see our characters fighting in the campaign level Fallen Angel. It's unclear if this was ever a map idea or just a funny little reference. And from some concept artists, we have this lovely piece of art that shows our heroes fighting aboard a pirate ship. Whatever happened to the remnants of this idea are currently unknown as well. Either this would have shown up in the buried intro alongside the different scenes between the different maps they're fighting between, or this was actually an idea that they had in development. Off topic, but just like in Black Ops 1, there remains unused announcer lines again. This time for the mobsters, Finn, Sal, and Billy. Why none are present for Weasel is strange though. Points, Insta Kill, Max Ammo, Kaboom, Fire Cell, Carpenter, Double Points, Insta Kill, Max Ammo, Kaboom, Fire Cell, Carpenter, Double Points, Insta Kill, Max Ammo, Kaboom, Fire Cell. Also in Origins, there exists an unused Samantha voice line for her saying something called Mystery. Again, these are preserved by Rizal. He's a cool dude, you should check him out. If he ever uploads, that is. Fire sale, blood money, zombie blood, mystery, zombie cash. And finally, there's the unused weapons for zombies. In the files remains a text string for the Dragonov, but I don't think anyone's really missing that one. There's also code referencing the Spaz, but it was never ported over to zombies. Why it is, is unclear. 
And finally, there appears to still be remnants of bouncing Bettys, of all weapons. And that was everything in Black Ops 2. While a load of it was front-loaded in transit, it's always good to see less and less of this stuff getting cut. Or maybe they're just getting better at removing it. Well, on to everyone's favorite, Black Ops 3. Let's start our discussion of Black Ops 3 with a cut perk. Now, you've all heard of Widow's Wine, but alongside this perk, there's concept art for an additional perk called 5050. Now, sadly, the only place that I was able to find this reference to this perk was an old Noah J video, so let's take this photo with a grain of salt. But whatever happened to 5050 is unclear, as the perk is yet to show up in any other pieces of concept art or promotional material for the game. And speaking of unreleased content, there's the game's alpha, which features a ton of really cool tidbits about the game's development. First of all, we would have seen difficulty modes, like what we see in Black Ops 4, and an opportunity for the players to upgrade and unlock character outfits. Why this still hasn't been implemented in Zombies is wild to me. In place of Liquid Divinium, there's the early concept of the Let It Ride tokens, which sounds dumb, and I'm happy that they're out of the game. And finally, for the alpha, we have some pre-release gobblegums, Brainiac, Center of Attention, Firestarter, Melee Master, and Toxic Vindicator. Brainiac would have most likely became the Goblin Mind Blown. Center of Attention is clearly Now You See Me. Firestarter is most likely Burnt Out. Melee Master is Swordflay. And I can't exactly tell you what became of Toxic Vindicator. In Shadows of Evil, there's the infamous Apothecon Servant upgrade, which was cut from development for being too overpowered. Why it was never reintroduced into the map will forever blow my mind. The steps have been found and were pretty easy. Collect kills with the weapon, and find a cocoon around the map using the Apothecon Servant like a metal detector. Once a few rounds have passed, the weapon will be upgraded. Something I'd still like to see in the original Shadows, the cocoons add a lot of style to the area. This upgrade was later added into Revelations, with a pretty unoriginal upgrade method. Boy, do I love looking for blue rocks in a blue skybox. Great thinking, Treyarch. Speaking of Revelations, there's also a ton of cut easter egg steps found in the code. References to the Ascension rocket are made, and part of the main quest would have involved packing punching the summoning key and placing it within the rocket, launching it into space. This event has been preserved by COD Zombies HQ. Whatever happened to these ideas is unclear, but could have simply been plans that didn't make it to the final cut. It involved repairing a rocket, it involved pack a punching the summoning key, and then placing that packed summoning key inside of the rocket. Maybe they put the summoning key in the rocket for it to be used offensively instead of to destroy it. We, we just don't know. I'd love to know what you guys think though. And just like in Black Ops 1 and 2, Revelations came with its own unused voice lines, this time for the Shadow Man and Dr. Monty, implying early in development that the player would have had the ability to side with one of the two cosmic deities. And, uh, double points. Insta-kill. Kaboom. Fire sail. Minigun. Bonus points. Carpenter. Double points. Insta-kill. Max ammo. Fire sail. Minigun. Bonus point. And of course, who could forget about the chicken side easter egg? For those who don't know, whenever you go through the teleporter in Noct that's heading back to Quick Revive, you'll be able to see some rocks removed by this chicken coop, implying that there were some chicken eggs that the player could have interacted with. And in the files, we found this chicken icon. This isn't too far out of the question. In Zetsubo, we were able to turn into a spider by the spider bait easter egg. So who knows whatever this chicken easter egg would have been, and why it was never introduced. And as far as I can tell, that's all the confirmed cut content for Black Ops 3. It's quite short. And now, let's move on to my favorite game, Black Ops 4. So, let's start our discussion of Black Ops 4 with one of the most infamous cut features in all of Zombies, Factions. Now, unlike many of these features hidden in code and concept art, Factions was something openly spoken about by Treyarch and Jason Lundell, with great pride too. At San Diego Comic Con, the summer before Black Ops 4's release, we even learned the names of the first four factions, Bloodfaith, Tempest Novi, Dustborn, and the First Legion. 
Factions would have involved players completing challenges that would reward them with various lore tidbits and explore the universe of zombies in depth, much like the tome system found in Dead by Daylight. The last we heard of the mode came from the team themselves, which explained that factions would be coming after Ancient Evil. We would never see or hear of the mode ever again. Speaking of pre-release, there's also the leaked alpha footage of Voyage of Despair and Blood of the Dead. In this footage, we see the remnants of Juggernog, Speed Cola, and Gobblegums before they were turned into elixirs. And in the Blood of the Dead footage, which I was able to track down, we see Black Ops 4 in a much earlier state than the Voyage video. Sadly, the Voyage video has been lost to time as far as I can tell. And in the Blood of the Dead footage, we get to see how the game evolved over time. More cut content includes the existence of Newton's Cookbook and the Death Machine. But with the existence of specialist weapons, the Death Machine had very little reason to exist. And of course, there's also Baphomet's Entry, the name of the infamous cut easter egg that involved various hidden rooms found all throughout Black Ops 4 in Voyager Despair, Blood of the Dead, Classified, and Ancient Evil. This is most likely the only remnant of a BO4 super easter egg, and my theory is it would have included a golden pack-a-punch on each map. Funny enough, bots will still attempt to enter these rooms as they're fully coded and AI is able to be pathed into them. Alongside the cut super easter egg, there's also cut maps. To preface, the DLC maps in Black Ops 4 were given code names based off of various colors. Ancient Evil is ZM Red, Alpha Omega is ZM White, and Tog is ZM Orange. Now, I can no longer find this information, but I know a map found in the code was titled ZM Blue. This map is typically associated with the unreleased 5th Chaos map. This theory is backed up by the existence of the Eye of Apothis weapon found in the Blackout Black Market. Most likely assumed to be connected to this unreleased Chaos map, as Apophis is the Egyptian god of chaos. It was always weird what this weapon was doing there, and it's pretty obvious where the Wonder Weapon truly belongs. And another feature was one revealed by Treyarch at the original Black Ops 4 reveal. During the presentation, Jason Blundell introduced Custom Mutations, a game mode where players can create their own matches of Black Ops 4 with special modifiers. Blundell revealed the team at Treyarch would regularly release their own Custom Mutation challenges that players could take on. This mode was never implemented, but an icon was created and found in the code. Developer-made challenges have not yet reappeared in Zombies, but who knows what the future holds. And that's all the confirmed cut content for Black Ops 4. So let's finish this adventure off with Cold War. Cold War begins with a cut rendition of Double Tap's theme. In the code exist references to Dark Aether song versions of Mule Kick, PhD, Tombstone, and Double Tap, with these perks besides Double Tap actually making it into the game. Also in the code for D-Machina contains remnants of HUD icons for player-speaking characters like Samantha Maxis and Pator, a Soviet soldier who became trapped in the Dark Aether. The Samantha HUD icon would eventually be rewarded to players at the end of Cold War Super Easter Egg, and the Pator HUD icon would never be used. It's unclear what role these two are going to play in the map, and why they were cut besides time constraints. And finally, in the code for Cold War exist remnants of Black Ops 4's Rush, Gauntlet, and Tutorial Side Modes but it's most likely that these modes remain because Cold War is built off of Black Ops 4's engine. And that's all the confirmed cut content in Call of Duty Zombies. This was an amazing project to research and gather information for. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed, and if there's a piece of cut content that you know of that I didn't include in this video, leave it in the comments below. I love to read your guys' thoughts. Well, thank you all for watching, and remember, keep on slaying.